This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein. <laughs> Hi, here's us planning our show as we're doing it. Every year I would have the coolest costume and have put a jacket on. <laughs> It sucked. Aroma <laughs> de zombie poop. <laughs> Very nice. Well, and I like it because it's almost a slutty Halloween costume. <laughs> Brains. IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. It uh, happened again this week, by the way. What did? Where something we talked about on a previous show uh -huh. made it on to, let's just say, a major news outlet here in East Idaho. Yeah. And what was it that we talked about? So so either the major news outlets are having a slow news week. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say what, because I don't, um, don't want to lack of news shame anyone. You'll tell me later? I will. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. That's all that matters. And no one else really cares. Yeah, so. right, right. Welcome to a special spooky Halloween goth edition of <laughs> IFAF. It's nice to have you here. You look fantastic, by the way. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I actually bought what? this on discount last year, and I've been okay. dying to wear it ever since. Okay. Yeah. I, it's just fantastic. It's cool, huh? It's by Unique Vintage. They do the best Halloween clothes. This is your favorite store in the world. Oh, yeah. I love they their have stuff. one brick and mortar location in Burbank, mm -hmm. California, which, which I we've been to. heard is closing down. What? Yeah, they're going fully online now. Lame. I know. So lame. Well, it's a good thing we visited when we did. I agree. If you're uh, just listening and not watching, Carly's just wearing this super cute goth chick, <laughs> black uh, with uh, spider webs and purple accents it's it's really great mm -hmm. and a beret because you woke up late today <laughs> i woke up so late i had 15 minutes to get to work uh -huh. and i did not have time to shower or anything so my hair was a mess i threw it up in a ponytail and put a headband on it and then when i went to let my dog out when i finally had a break i was like hey we gotta fix this so i threw on a beret and put in pigtails instead because i thought it looked better <laughs> one thing i've learned about women in general is they're so resourceful oh yeah like you look more put together than you ever have before <laughs> and come to find out it's because you got an outfit on clearance mm -hmm. and you had, what's the uh, Leonard Bernstein quote? There's a famous quote by the former conductor of the, um, I think the New York Symphony. Oh, I know the one. Um, yeah. Uh, to, re to achieve greatness, you need two things, mm -hmm. a plan and not enough time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I think that's exactly what happened today because I knew already what I wanted to wear, or at least I had a vague enough idea, um, which was this black dress. And then I was like, okay, well, it's cold. I need a sweater. That'll do. That'll do. Let's go. <laughs> It yeah. looks just fantastic. Thank you. Let's get let's get straight to the uh, comments and follow ups. I just want to say more buff, more muff. Thank you for the kind offer, very kind offer. So I guess he um, he does social media stuff. Oh, and he's like, I can put you guys in the algorithm, and I have no doubt in my mind that you could. I too am a little bit of a scientist <laughs> <laughs> or a tinkerer, I think, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, I would just say MBMM, let me give it a try first. Let me see how far I can get on my own. Like a little kid throwing a tantrum, I want to do it on my own. <laughs> and then and then we might call in the big guns. And, yeah. and you know I'm talking about these, boy. <laughs> All right. Also, our friend John Riggs. I mentioned oh, that yeah. John Riggs of Rigged Games, You uh, and it's uh, rigged without the E, games.com. Sent us the air freshener. Would you like to know what kind of air freshener a serial addict retro gamer has created? I do. The minute I hold this up, you'll laugh your ass off. Uh-huh. Here we go. Isn't that brilliant? That's perfect. It's, I love it. It's the uh, it's the thing that all 80s, you know, only 80s kids will remember. Mm -hmm. The 25 cent insert coin. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the coin, coin slot insertion thing. Slot, that's two slots. Two slots are better than one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on an old 80s arcade video game. Now, I know what it's supposed to smell like. Uh -huh. I, I sort of have an unfair advantage here. Mm -hmm. So I thought before we opened it, it's still in the sealed package. Ooh, yeah. Uh huh. You can get these at riggedgames.com, by the way. And I know exactly who we're going to get one of these for after the show. Okay. Like your mom, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's kind of what I was not thinking. Watching us. Yeah. Is no, she watching this? Do you think? Uh, I don't know. I mean, as my like mom, this, she should be. 
Don't you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I think I've already blown it. I think you have. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> so let's give this a smell. Let's give this a test drive with our <laughs> nostrils. I can't wait. Oh, okay. I smell so at least- So is it one or is it two in there? It's, okay, it's just one. One, okay. And it's a little air freshener unboxing video. It looks just like an air freshener. Now, mm -hmm. it has multiple scents. Mm -hmm. So I want to see if you can identify any one or any of them. Yeah. Ooh. What does it smell like to you? And and then I'll tell you what it is. Is it weird that it almost has like a tobacco smell to it? No, it is not. Really? Okay. Really. And like something sweet, like a vanilla okay. somewhere in there. But I'm sure it's like considering the theme that vanilla is probably like candy or ice cream or something like that is what it's supposed to be. But and let me give it a good whiff mm. too before I tell you because yeah, I, I want to. I, I wrote it down in my notes, but I haven't reviewed them for... It's definitely got a lot of sweetness to it. But it's got that nice, like, yeah, it... sultry scent to it, too. It, it smells like the arcade in a bowling alley where your mom leaves you so that you can... So that she can go over and drink at the bar. Disco. <laughs> That's exactly what it smells like. Listen to this. Menthol cigarettes. Oh, funny. Wood paneling. Okay. I thought I had machine, a sandalwood in there. And spilt stale... Cola. Funny. That's what this is supposed to smell like. Okay. So basically, yeah. That's an 80s so arcade. funny. You know what? I thought there was a little cedar wood to it, but I didn't want to be wrong. I That's thought the I was wood maybe. Yeah, I, think. I thought that I was maybe getting the tobacco wrong, but this, yeah. This does kind of smell like where I cut my Ms. Pac Man chops at the right. Bolero in 1984 <laughs> or whenever that was. Uh huh. Anyway, John, thank you so much. We'll send people to your Shopify page. It's in the link on this post. And uh, I know that I'm going to purchase at least one. Oh, yeah. As a stocking stuffer <laughs> this Christmas. I love that. That's a great idea. Rigged without the E games.com. <laughs> that's so cool. That's a good, that's a great scent. I really like it. Just have the coolest friends. Now, can I really quickly point out one thing? Yeah. Do your glasses sort of detract from your guy liner? I, I'm gonna keep them on. I like I like my glasses because I like to see you. You're I just know, out fair. of my. You're you're six feet and one inch away from me mm -hmm. in this room. Mm -hmm. And um, and by the way, if you want to see what our room looks like, it's no secret. The our our Facebook page has the the cover photo is the studio, so you can kind of mm -hmm. see the space that we're working in. But um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I like to. Can you not see the? No, I can. It just it makes you look a little less punk. Well, and let's describe this outfit I'm wearing, too. This is uh, a famous t-shirt. I'm sure you've seen it. Mm -hmm. You may not have actually. I think the Misfits, it's a Misfits t-shirt, for those listening, with the you know the classic Misfits logo and the skull. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, actually, the Misfits have sold more shirts, more merch, than they have actual albums. Probably. At this point, <laughs> even though they rebanded uh, in the late 90s and are still doing some things today. Mm -hmm. The Misfits were a band uh, founded by Glenn Danzig, late 70s. Mm -hmm. They had two, exactly two albums. I think one in 82, one in 83. Think same era as Henry Rollins' Black Flag, maybe the Sex Pistols. Mm -hmm. That sort of late 70s, early 80s punk revolution we had. And then Danzig, of course, went on to form Sam Hain and then his own band, Danzig. This... Skull here, and you know, I'm sure they've got these like at Hot Topic or wherever you want to get it, wherever you get your punk rock t shirts. <laughs> but the skull on here is from a 1947 horror movie, The Crimson oh. Ghost. Oh, and yeah, so uh, the, the Misfits actually were one of the pioneers of the sub, the, the, the sub genre of punk music called horror punk. Oh, okay. That's super cool. So that's why I'm wearing this festive shirt and the guy liner, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I got to keep it fresh for the Halloween episode. We're actually going to a Halloween party as, uh, you're going as Batgirl. Mm -hmm. And I was going to go as Batman. Realized this isn't the year for mm -hmm. Mikey to um, show off his physique <laughs> or even pretend to have one. In fact... I was thinking about a getting a costume that was one size too small and literally going as Fat Man. <laughs> Aw, <hon. laughs> that's uh, th that's about where I'm at. But instead, uh, we went with the Joker. 
You're not nearly as bad as you think you are, just so you know. I know, but every mm-hmm. and here's something I've learned about weight mm-hmm. um, or body shape. You know, everybody has their sort of threshold, right? Where they go, this is bullshit. I'm making a change, right? Yeah. And I reached mine about 10, 20 pounds ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yep. I've been in the same boat. Yeah. You know, no I call excuse. It, and I call it happy weight. Yeah. You know, this is the weight that I'm at because I've been happy and mm-hmm. I've been, you know, kind of lackadaisical with all my other stuff because when you're happy, you don't care about anything. Contentment you know? weight. Yeah. Sure. Now, that being said, I do definitely miss working out because I've had no time to do that lately. And that's something that I feel really grounds me and makes me feel like a better person. Like, well, more of a person. I don't know. It just makes me feel good. Uh, so it's been kind of hard for me to not have a good normal workout routine. I don't work out a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a set of free weights. I had a bow flex, but I never used it. It was Mm -hmm. a great clothes hanger. But I have started to realize in my old age that the body and the mind are one biological machine. (laughs) And I need to take care of both. Right. Which is such bullshit. It's so unfair. Why do I got Life's so hard. I just hit the treadmill. I'm really good, though, at dieting. I'm really mm. disciplined in that way. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not even good at working out. But if I have a class or something to go to, or if I'm doing something that I actually like, like the first time I lost a lot of weight, it was through swimming, which I love to do. So it was super easy. And that's why Michael Phelps can, yeah, yeah. consume 20,000 calories a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, realistically, I can't just go to the gym and work out because it's so boring and I can't, <laughs> like, I get so annoyed at how tedious it is that I just don't want to do it. So I don't. You need a podcast. You need an internet talk show like us. Even with it. Even with it. I just don't like what I'm doing and it's boring and I hate it. So instead, if I do a class or if I do something like swimming or even running or walking or something like that, that's all good. It's just if I have to do like sets and stuff, because then I get focused on how like the count and the reps and the, you know, the dumb stuff. I heard Rogan I, I, I'm not an avid listener, but it sometimes comes up on my feed. The statement I heard was, if you're not working to fail, like, mm-hmm. it, you know, you do 12 reps and then you think you can do one more and then you do two more and then you're just like done. Right. You, you couldn't even lift a glass of water. Mm-hmm. That's when you start to build muscle. Isn't it? Isn't it funny slash sucky that the only reason to really get stronger is to work to a point of failure? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, um, <laughs> again, the philosophy of this podcast, <laughs> of this internet talk yeah, show. Yeah, we're just careening toward failure as fast as possible <laughs> with the hopes that it'll make us stronger. We'll Let's see. see. Well, you've heard, you've heard of the, I think it's called the Peter Principle, where you get promoted to your level of incompetence. Yes. Uh-huh. You do well in one position. They move you up. They promote you. They move you up. And then uh, inevitably you fail and they fire you. Right. Or you're just seen as an incompetent manager, whatever position mm-hmm. you're in. But yeah, that's, I always think that since we know that now, Uh once you see somebody start to fail, go to them, managers, in a private moment and say, are you okay? Do you want to, do you want to go back down a notch? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right? Yeah. Because obviously they were a good enough employee to promote, to promote, to promote, and then you kick them out the door. It seems so unfair. That happens a lot in radio, actually. Yeah, they just need to keep the pay the same though, or else no one will ever go will ever go back down. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But that way, you'll know that that's as far as they need to go. That's so cynical and so correct. Carl. <laughs> yeah, but if they if they know that that's as far as they need to go, and that they can be great in that role, then they're going to be awesome in it. So it's going to be worth the money, I think. Well, and how many times we we've had this conversation, I think, with a friend of yours where. Mm-hmm. She started a new job and she just felt like an idiot. Right. For like two months. Oh, yeah. It, uh, certainly the first two days, then the two weeks. And then, but after two months, she's like, yeah, I got this. Mm-hmm. You know? And so I wonder, you know, there's got to be a time limit, maybe. Right. Right. Oh, Can I show off? While, yeah. While he's <laughs> while out and he's about, out. while he's dancing around, <laughs> we want to show you Rango's Halloween costume. <laughs> I think he's just not used to the shape of things. <laughs> He's got little bat wings. He's so handsome. They're so And you know, cute. he looks just like a flying fox bat in these. He really does. Uh-huh. I see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right in my mouth. <laughs> a flying fox bat with a giant tongue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, baby, I love you. Okay, I can tell he's uncomfortable, so I'm going to take these off of him real quick. If you're done torturing him, but yeah. I just I, wanted to show him off. 
he has ever since he got here, he's been acting out of sorts. Poor right. guy. <laughs> uh, I took him into Ulta like this and people yeah. were like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing because I looked like this and he looked like this and we looked like just quite the little pair. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, baby. There you go. Free at last. Hi, Daddy. Oh, he's yeah. Now he's naked. He's so happy. He's naked, baby. The uh the <laughs> bionic chihuahua <laughs> with the four hundred dollar peen. Right. Aw. <laughs> uh, That's what he should go as this Halloween. <laughs> one of our most viewed TikToks, by the way. Yeah. Is Carly's For good reason. Carly's dog broke his wiener. Oh. Uh, that's a couple episodes ago. If you want to know more or search any of our feeds, I, I think it's on there. Also want to mention, remember Austin Allen? Yes. Was it last episode? Just last episode. I think it was with the really great Halloween decorations. Yeah. So I got to talking with him just a little bit more and uh, said, wow, you know, your yard looks fantastic. Thanks for letting us share your video with the mm-hmm. with our audience. And what I didn't realize is he runs a, the reason his yard looks so good he runs a, a little uh, company called Mountain Macabre. Right. Which, can I just say, kind of like the vet that helped diagnose Rango's broken peen, this guy really needs to lead with the clothes here. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, le- yeah. <laughs> it took so much work to get that out of it. Don't bury the lead, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> this is something that's so cool. So if you're looking for custom made, what does he call them? Um, handmade horrors. I love that. Then you want to hit up Mountain Macabre. On Facebook, looks like Macabre, if you've mm-hmm. only read the word, pronounced macabre. Mm-hmm. He does a great job. Want to give him one more shout out, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, can we move on to our next show and tell thing? Yes. After I take a after you, of uh, this. W- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just incredible. Do you want another whiff? I do, actually. Thank you. Do you want yeah. another hit? You know, I will say, after you mentioned it, I could smell the mint more. Okay. It really does smell good. Since this is our Halloween episode, I brought <gasps> I brought uh, something else to the table. That'd be a good palate cleanser between all of our little snackies and stuff. I wanted to mention glowing zombie poop. <laughs> so you you might recognize the box almost immediately. Mm-hmm. These are rebranded poppets from the Fourth of July. Only they glow in the dark. Which also, why have it kind be poop? Of. They look more like eyeballs. Right. They they're they're poppets that glow in the dark and the the company TNT has rebranded them glowing zombie poop, which I get that's cool. Everything's poop. I don't get the poop thing. I really don't. You know what uh and I was reminded of this. I saw it at the dollar store last year. The unicorn poop? <laughs> unicorn poop and they're just little colorful marshmallows. Right. Yeah. Right. But I, I don't I don't know why I think that's so cute cuz I don't think poop is cute. Yeah. I even try not to use the poop emoji. Right, too much. It's gross. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. Um, and then when you're being a little shit, <laughs> you know, miners, if you're watching this, please don't try this at home. But you know, you. Oh, Ooh. ah, disappointing. I mean, it did I, pop at the end. I winced for that. <laughs> what a wuss. Let's see if I can do it with my eyes open this time. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That was that was me. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Aroma de zombie poop. <laughs> Very nice. Brains. This is I guess this is what they poop out when they eat. Brains. Dumb. Brains. <laughs> anyway, cool. That's fun. <laughs> Hi. I'm 12. <laughs> Stupid little stuff like that impresses me. Do we want to get to the snacky snacks we have or do we want to save them for later? Or what do I we want to do? I want to do the snacky snacks. Let's do the snacky snacks. Yeah. Okay. So we, snackity. We have um we have these Skittles, and they're, how are they branded? Shriekers. They're called Shriekers. Oh, okay. They've got a skull on them. Ooh, nice. And it's the warning is, beware. Uh, beware, you're in for a scare. Eat if you da-da, dare. Da-da, I guess da-da. some of them are so sour, it'll blow your brains out. Oh, no, okay. it'll make you shriek. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know where I got that morbidity <laughs> from. Yeah, that's a little too much. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, give me some. You want just a handful there? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. Should we eat or should we movie eat? You know you know mm-hmm. how in the movies they take just a bit of... In fact, a- Alexis in Schitt's Creek, I don't think ever eats on camera. <laughs> I think she only has a I sip of milkshake. I tried to eat that. <laughs> and? And then I dropped it. Let's see how sour these are. I'm doing four. How many did you do? I just did one to start with. That one was even, it was not even sour. 
Huh. Are they like, some of them are sour? Like they're like, there's oh, a few? Yeah. Okay. And I think. Are they certain flavors or is it even of those those flavors only some we'll are sour? We'll have to go to the replay. Yeah. Some of them are. Okay. That's how they get you. Mm-hmm. All right. That's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. I like playing. They like lull you into a false sense of security. Skittles, Shriekers, Roulette. Mm-hmm. Right. That one was a little sour. Had a couple that weren't so bad, and then pow. That said, I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe to my advanced palate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe some twelve-year-old kid would, you know, freak out. But yeah, they're not that sour. They're still good. It would be funny to give them to a toddler. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like the toddler. Like the eating lemon. a lemon uh-huh. for the first time videos. I do know someone who would love these though. Which I can't get enough of. I've uh, got a friend who loves sour stuff. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, they're more w- more than mm-hmm. welcome to have our sloppy seconds because I don't. I, mean, think- I might finish those. Those are good. This <laughs> is a share size. Oh, I got another one. <laughs> wow. I only got one. Forrest Gump was right, man. Life is like. <laughs> a package, a sheer size package of Skittle Shriekers. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. That's funny. <laughs> I'd rate those more highly than the McDonald's pumpkin and cream pie. Oh, really? I like. I really liked that pumpkin and cream pie. I thought that was good. Yeah. And to be fair, we didn't have it as hot and fresh as we could have and should have. Right. <laughs> you had to get some of that sour out of your mouth. Man, the, and the, it's kind of cumulatively sour. Oh, interesting. You, you know when you have a salsa and you're thinking, oh, it's a little hot, but I can yeah, handle it. And right. then you have four more chips and you're like, gah, stop. Yeah, I totally know what you mean. What you got there, Carl? Uh, well, this is a little ditty that I picked up at Brolem's in Ammon. It is a zero sugar Fanta. It's their Halloween one with all the little spooky labeling. Okay. And it's black. Yeah. Which is kind of fun. The drink is black. It's a clear bottle. And then against it is this sort of, um, eh. Witch's brew green. Is that witch's brew green again? Like the one you used in your cat painting? Yeah. Or even like glow in the dark green. Isn't it funny? And I just want to point this out. <laughs> that kids these days, and I, I, there was a definitive dividing line in the last 5, 10, maybe even 15 years. So let's call it 10 so that would have been 2013, mm-hmm. where Halloween colors switched from the traditional orange and black to green and purple. You know, I feel like orange and purple were always the most classic combo. Okay. Maybe that's just me. And then, so I felt like the primary ones were orange and purple, and then the secondary ones were green and black. Okay. You know, but maybe that's just me. And I don't know... I think the green they're going for, the or the thing that green is supposed to evoke, mm-hmm. is indeed a vat that a witch is stirring, hence a cauldron. witch's brew. Yeah, a cauldron. Thank you. This didn't have it, like a satisfying- Oh, it didn't- It didn't. Maybe it's poisoned. Maybe. Great. Let's drink it. Should we drink it anyway? I mean, yeah. it is mystery flavored. We're at- mm, arsenic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall I go Tastes first? Tastes like arsenic and old lace. Yeah. Does this taste like arsenic to you? <laughs> Does this smell like chloroform to you? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> mm. And it's got a question mark on it, so I'm assuming this is a mystery flavor that they haven't it is. labeled. It is. Okay, so this is almost like smelling the air freshener without the benefit of knowing really what it is. Yeah, it even says on there mystery flavored soda, mm. <laughs> which I think is kind of funny. Now, I think I know what it is. Tastes like a mystery. What do you think it is? I think it's orange mango. I would go so far as to maybe say tangerine. Oh. But yes, it it definitely Mm -hmm. has a citrus fruit taste. And when do cuties come out? Is this about the time cuties come out? This is about the time. In the fall and winter, you get those Mm -hmm. cute little clementines. I love those. That's what they are, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, I'd say that's seasonally appropriate. Yeah, I think so. Okay, up next, and I promise this is the last thing we're going to this is the one I was most excited about. Or taste on the show. And mm. this one is also the most local of everything that we've tried. I'll let you hold them up to the camera because I've got oh, yeah. uh, I got this to hold up. This is the card for one, Cooking with Kent. And he makes macrons as mm-hmm. Carly is currently modeling. My favorite dessert, period, the end. 
Now, Kent is a kid that we met at the Acton Children's Business Fair at McCowan Park in Ammon last summer, 2022. Uh Uh-huh. And he's just a charming little kid who's very talented. And we put two and two together because Carly loves Macrons. Mm Mm-hmm. And these are fresh out the box. Right. Now, really quick, have you taken pictures of these yet? I have not. Okay. Then I think that we should each share one of each flavor, and then we'll take a picture of the other three. Okay. And then we'll we'll put it up on the screen so you can see it. Yeah. Probably like right now. I'll try to do the less- Hi, here's us planning our show (laughs) as we're doing it. I'll try to do the less pretty of them. That's what we do. I think this (laughs) one's less pretty. The less- Yeah. Pick the least photogenic one. Yeah. So there's- There's a ghost. There's ghosts, there's pumpkins, and then there's monsters. Or as as our friend Jesse likes to say, pumpkins. Pumpkin, pumpkin. When when he's talking to my cat. Hi, pumpkin. (laughs) It's so friggin' cute. I love him. Uh, And then we've also got these really cute little monsters. If I can take them out without ruining their eyeballs. (laughs) Pretty cute. These are my fave. (laughs) These are my fave, too. Yeah, they look like... uh, Oh, they smell so good. They almost look like Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, kind of. But yeah, just a green monster with googly eyes. All right. And teeth. Who puts teeth in a Macron? Who thinks right? of that? So smart. Kent does. Mm-hmm. That's what, see, you know, kids <laughs> just have this imagination, man. The best part is I'm pretty sure that they're white chocolate chips, and those are my favorite kind well, of get chocolate it on. chips. Now, really quick, which one do we want to start with here? Let's eat the prettiest one first. The monster? Yeah. I love it. Okay. I'll take one eyeball. You get the other. Go for it. I just love it. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, Rango gets a little snack. We'll clean up afterwards. <laughs> oh man, it's delicious. They're not usually so crumbly, but they were sitting for a couple of days before we filmed. So I think these are the kiwi strawberry ones. Mm. Yeah. Is that what's going on there? Let me taste that. Yeah. Nailed it, bro. So freaking good. Are macrons kind of like tamales <laughs> in that they're just a mm-hmm. pain in the ass to make? Mm hmm. Um, so when you do, you make large batches and that distribute an, them to... That is an astute observation you're making there. Yeah. Well, no, I don't know. No, I think uh, they... I know that they are incredibly hard to make. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think that you're right where it makes more sense to make a whole bunch of them and then sell them and stuff yeah. rather than have people individually try to make their own because they're very technical. Mm-hmm. What do we try? Okay, this is the ghost we're trying now. Mm-hmm. Is it ghost flavored? Let's mm-hmm. find out. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a toasted marshmallow. Okay, that's my favorite so far. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right, and then the pumpkin. I hope that this is pumpkin spice flavor because if it's not, <laughs> I'm going to be very upset. Maybe it'll be <laughs> mystery flavored. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that is <Ooh>. in PSL. <laughs> You're right. That's in PS. I love that. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that is great. That one's good. He didn't skimp on the flavor. No, that one might be my favorite. I love it when they put the right amount. Of, bakers put the right amount of flavor in because sometimes mm. you get a hint of. I don't want a hint of lemon bar. Right. I want a. Smack me across the face with lemons. Right, With yes. a bag of lemons. <laughs> I completely agree. Are we all caught up? Oh, one more thing. We watched Slother House. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, it gets better. Than just a rampaging sloth, just a sloth on a rampage, it's a sloth on a rampage at a sorority <laughs> house. Because of course it is. Because of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. They don't show anything. No. You, you would think- uh, It's actually very mild. With a setting like that, there'd be, you know, sorority things on camera. Right, right. No, it's- it's some, Yeah, some, you know, pillow fights in 90s, that right. sort of thing. Yeah. Right. Nothing. And- <laughs> Really disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> My only question heading into it was, do the producers know how stupid an idea this <laughs> is? And I think the answer I came up with was Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they were very self-aware and very much leaned into it. At first, I didn't think that they were going to lean into it. Yeah. And then one scene happened. Mike and I looked at each other and said, are they really doing that? And that's when I knew that they were leaning into it. And that's when we said, okay. Yeah. It, it is intentionally 
campy. Right, right. It. I will say a lot of the dialogue sounds like it was uh, written by a potato. Yes. And I mean that in the acronym, not as the root vegetable, which I love. <laughs> e- yeah, either it was written by yeah, a, a, a potato or a pofato. Right. A person over 40 acting 21. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. like it was written 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, you know, they were trying to write lines for college kids and just failed miserably. It was very much, how do you do, fellow kids? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Music band. <laughs> That's a reference to Steve Buscemi in 30 Rock. If you haven't seen that episode, hilarious. So funny. Uh, but yeah, they. I'm pretty sure they knew it was campy. I would like to see, I'd watch a prequel. You know what? I think I would. I want to know the sloth's backstory and how he got that way. Yeah. I how he turned into a murderous... She. It was a girl sloth. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Don't erase the feminism of this movie. How dare you? Maybe it's a trans sloth. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I guess we could find out. Maybe we'll find out in the prequel. Right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I will say I don't feel like they fleshed out the sloth's motivation as much as I would have liked. <laughs> right. You know, it felt a little... Uh, Derivative, but it, you know. It just starts instantly <laughs> killing. I want to know why. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. I want to know too. <laughs> Who hurt you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think the first kill is justified. It's the ones after that where I'm like, okay, but like why? Yeah. And also... I have to wonder who is cleaning this sorority house because I feel like a lot of things should have been discovered a lot earlier. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think if you have an inkling to watch this, you and all your smart ass friends should get together. Yes. And say, do you want to watch the stupidest Halloween movie ever made? This is a great mystery science theater type of movie. Yes. Yeah. If you guys sit on the couch and crack jokes the whole time. Kind of like what we did with Love Never Dies. This is the perfect movie for you. Yeah. And we'll get to checking it twice eventually. I, I thought, um, not here we are on our Halloween episode talking about a Christmas movie, but that's what happens. <laughs> and to be fair, the only reason we haven't seen it yet is because I have dug my heels in. So you're welcome. Carly for those who actually care about calendars. <laughs> has this thing about if you even recognize a holiday before another holiday has passed, then that's blasphemy in the first degree. Yes. I saw two different people walking around wearing Christmas sweaters today, and I was pissed. I was so mad. <laughs> Here, here's a question for everybody who says, well, no, uh, uh, you can't talk about Christmas until after Thanksgiving, which I think is You can talk about it, but you can't go crap. putting up your lights. You can't have your tree up. You can't be watching Christmas. You can't get into, you cannot get into the Christmas spirit until you're fully done with the Thanksgiving spirit. Great. I'm glad you brought that up. Show me Thanksgiving lights. Show me a Thanksgiving movie. Show me Thanksgiving decorations other than the kid who drew the turkey around his hand Mm -hmm. on a paper plate and glued it with macaroni. That's the thing is there are no... There's the Thanksgiving... uh, The only thing Thanksgiving has to offer is one day of gorging yourself. Yeah, that's pretty hot though. That, that's that, a good, like that's a genuinely good holiday. And if we can talk <laughs> about if so, I talked to the Spirit Halloween person, and they in Idaho Falls have been open since August, in Pocatello since July. What? Yeah. So that if, seems excessive. If if we can start talking about Halloween two, three, four months in advance. We can talk about Christmas two months in advance. Okay, but Halloween does November take- one. It's Christmas time, baby. Halloween takes a lot of prep, though. Okay, I'm glad you brought this up, because one of the questions I had for this show was, does anybody trick-or-treat anymore? Does anyone? I'm starting to wonder, honestly. And and I think, you know, COVID changed a lot of things, Mm -hmm. but even pre-COVID, we would um, put out a bowl of candy on the front porch, and just, it was honor system, you know? Yeah, I get that. And... uh, when, at the end of the night, when I, you know, 11 p.m., mm-hmm. even, even waited for the teenagers in T-shirts to come around, uh, brought in the bowl, it was like still 75% full. Oh, wow. So I know that there are now a lot of Halloween events, particularly trunk or treating. Right. That's a big one. Which I believe has only happened in the last 20 years. And also, right? it's such a bummer. I don't like trunk or treats. I think they're kind of lame and they're not as fun so i love the concept of efficiency you've heard the jerry seinfeld bit get candy Mm -hmm. get candy get candy right right you know you got kids out there with pillowcases oh yeah and they want to fill it to the brim Mm -hmm. and i fully support that by the way oh of course it's the one it's the one night a year that they can and so i love the concept of trunk or treating so much that i actually 
All right. So uh, pulling back the curtain in radio a little bit, sometimes radio people go from market to market. Mm -hmm. The minute you show up at a new radio station, they pump you hard for ideas and information because you're fresh blood. You're coming in with a fresh perspective and you sort of tell them things that worked in your market. So, so the minute I show up in Milwaukee, they're like, okay, what have you done that works? And I said, well, one thing that it was, it was, was it the fall? One thing that I've seen work in Salt Lake is trunk or, is something called trunk or treating. This was a brand new concept. And you know how when you're so excited to share something with somebody because it's such a brilliant idea? We've done that a lot on oh, this yeah. show. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you just can't wait to see their eyes light up. There was nothing but deadness when they looked at me. They just blank. Some of them, I dare say, were even a bit aghast. Well, yeah, because it is the death of Halloween. At the concept. So the 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 uh, Wisconsin State Fairgrounds are right there near downtown Milwaukee. And I proposed, you know, doing a first ever trunk or treat. And they thought I was crazy. Mm-hmm. They thought I was on something. And I may have been. No. <laughs> Beer, brats, and cheese. Yeah, right. <laughs> In retrospect, I kind of get it. Because if you're trying to explain the concept of trunk or treating to somebody foreign, you know, basically you're proposing that uh, strangers with their trunk open greet kids offering them candy. It does sound, if you put it that way, <laughs> it sounds a little weird. Well, yeah. I mean, especially if they have white vans. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no white windowless vans. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what like every radio station van is, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I, I do think that the missing key ingredient that I didn't quite understand at the time was it started in church parking lots. It started with people that you go to church with. That So there's that built-in mm-hmm. trust right, to right. some degree. Well, and you know, I think that you really should have harped on how much safer it is because, you know, you're all in one space. Yeah. Everyone's looking at everyone. It's not like anyone can grab a kid and run away because there's someone else five feet away from them. Right. Yeah. But I love the concept of trunk or treating because kids get candy fast. That's true. But I think kids should have to work for it. Right. I think it makes you more grateful for the candy you do get. Well, yeah. And I know there was at least one Halloween where I told the kids... Uh, and and I think they were older, so it wasn't much of a disappointment. Mm-hmm. One of them actually had a party they were going to, a sleepover at a friend's house or something. Oh, cute. But I was just like, I'm just going to go buy a bunch of little minis. We'll mm-hmm. get the good stuff. You can divide it up. Would that be okay? Yep. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Because, you know, yeah. I, like Easter egg hunts where the parents force their one-month-old to go out on the field and battle with a six-month-old. Yeah. I'm exaggerating slightly. <laughs> you know, it's like, why don't you just go spend the $2 on a bag of candy and call it good? True. I true. know there's I will say the too, experience in there somewhere. Yeah. Well, and on the other side of the trick-or-treat uh, exchange, as the person in the house giving out the candy, I would much rather be in my house with wassail on the stove or apple cider or whatever. I guess wassail's a little Christmassy, uh, but apple cider on the Don't stove. Don't skip holidays, Carly. Stop How it. dare you talk at, about wassail <laughs> at Halloween time? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> anyway, sorry, with apple cider. Cinnamon and oranges and cranberries only belong after Thanksgiving. Okay, too much. I hope you know how much I hate you. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Anyway, I would much rather a nice be witch's in my brew house on the stove with apple cider on the stove and a horror movie on the TV, you know, where I can just get up from the couch, open the door, throw some candy at some babies, and then close the door again. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, it's so much warmer. I don't want to be outside in the cold outside my car waiting for some kid to walk around and half heartedly say trick or treat. And it did. It got cold this week. Yeah. Uh, or last week. On Thursday, woke up to a light fairy dusting of snow, and I thought, okay, that's it. But no, it snowed some more later on in the day. It was so upsetting. I'm so mad about it. Well, and it just, but it brought back memories of Halloween's past here in East Idaho, trudging through a few (laughs) inches of snow Mm -hmm. with a coat over your Halloween costume. Oh, I hated that as a kid. Mom, no one's going to be able to know what I am. That was the worst. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And every year, 
every year I would have the coolest costume and have to put a jacket on. <laughs> it sucked. Yeah. I remember one year I went as a genie and it actually had a midriff to it. Oh. Um, which I kind of can't believe I was allowed to wear it. <laughs> right. Uh, but then I had to wear my jacket over it anyway, so no one could tell. <laughs> oh, what a cute little jacketed freak you are. <laughs> what do you say to a kid like that? Right. Man, there was this one Halloween, too. It was icy out, and I was excited, so I was, you know, kind of half running. Uh, and I slipped on some ice, dropped my candy everywhere, oh. completely bruised my butt. That's rough. It was the worst. <laughs> it was so, it was, that was a, that was a tough Halloween for me. And it was like right near the end, too. So I lost most of my candy and then didn't even have time to recoup it. Ugh. I was so sad. So wait, when the candy went scattering, you didn't pick it back up? Well, I tried, but mm -hmm. it was dark. There was only so much I could do. Can I tell you my saddest? And someone was in, someone was in a puddle, too. Like, you can't oh, save then, every piece. Yeah. yeah. My saddest trick-or-treating story. Mm -hmm. My stepdad took my older brother, Bill, and I around the neighborhood. And he said, now, just so you know, kids, there is a rule that uh, if the light is off, you don't go up to the house mm -hmm. and knock on the door, ring the doorbell. And uh, even as a kid, even as a 10-year-old precocious little bastard, I thought, that, that rule's bullshit. <laughs> right. It's Halloween. <laughs> I thought the same thing. I'm going to pump every single house for mm -hmm. all the candy. So I decided to test that rule. Come to find out your parents tell you things for a reason. I knocked, banged on the door, nothing. Mm -hmm. Banged on the door again. Meanwhile, I'm watching my brother get farther and farther away. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the youngest. And he's, you know, two houses down, bang on the door, three houses down. Finally, a frail old woman comes to the door and says, oh, don't you look cute. And um, she said, I, I don't really have anything. Aww. But then she said, well, let me, four houses down, you know, I'm, keep, I'm tracking everything. Let me see what I have in the fridge. Five houses, six houses down, half a block away now. She comes back with a single unwrapped coconut macaroon. And I, I thanked her profusely because I did have a, even though I wanted to test the waters, test the rule, see if my dad was right. And he was. Um, and, and I just feel so bad because I didn't eat it. Oh, no. When, when compared to, you know, Skittles yeah. and Snickers, I was like, I don't trust this. Well, Mom, do you want it? Sure, honey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coconut's not good when you're a kid. Right. Coconut yeah. isn't a treat. Yeah. Remember going to your grandma's house and you were so excited to see her because you knew you'd get spoiled. And she said, hey, little Mikey, do you, do you want a treat? Hey, little Carly, <laughs> do you want a treat? And then they'd give you an Almond Joy. Yeah. Yeah. Grandma, <laughs> treats don't contain nuts. <laughs> treats don't contain Less coconut. peanut butter. Or she'd point to a bowl of fruit on the table. Mm-hmm. That's not a treat. Jolly <laughs> Ranchers are a treat. Yes. Gummy Lifesavers are a treat. Mm -hmm. An apple? That's th it doesn't belong in a Christmas stocking. Yeah. It doesn't belong is it in the treat section? <laughs> it's fruit. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't care about fiber then. I sure do now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you get a little older and a little wiser and also, you know, you get a little more uh decrepit. <laughs> yeah. And I think about <laughs> that. Keep going. <laughs> little old lady. Every Halloween. Oh. You think you've got guilt. I'm just <laughs> crushed by the weight of all my mistakes. And also, <laughs> that's how you learn. It is. It is. That's how you learn. Yeah. Well, and also, even if you do have your porch light on, or sorry, even if you do have your porch light off, you really should have some emergency candy just in case there's some kid who wants to be a butt like Mike did. Yeah, but maybe she was a shut-in. I mean, I didn't understand yeah. the world like I do now. No, yeah, I get that. <sighs> I remember knocking on a couple of doors when I was a kid that I thought it was okay because no one told me that rule. I had to sort of figure that one out Did on your my parents own. just let you go wild? Oh, yeah. Because you grew up in Iona. Yeah. And you can, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And even before I lived in Iona, we'd go out to my grandma's house, which was in Iona, to trick-or-treat there because the houses were, you know, nice and close. It was a nice, safe neighborhood. Um, and they tended to have really good candy. Now, that being said, uh, my parents now don't really have to trick-or-treat with any kids unless I want to take my niece and nephew. Uh, so now they're the treat givers. And they do something that I think is brilliant. What? My parents give out like hostess snacks and little Debbie cakes and stuff like that. 
which is so smart because they're way cheaper than buying full-size candy bars, but they feel like a full-size candy bar. Right. It's got heft to it, or, or at least right. size. Yeah. It's yeah. got surface area to it. Yeah. They look big. Yeah. And uh, I've actually seen a couple of times when I've gone to help them hand out candy, um, kids will turn around and yell to the group behind them and stuff, guys, this is the house. Oh, <laughs> like so you, they've got a rep. They're infamous. I know. I love that. That's <laughs> And great. honestly, that's kind of, I think I'm going to carry on that tradition once I do start actually staying home and like giving out candy instead of being a party animal. Now, what do you think? Because I know there's plenty of kids with allergies and want to res- be respectful of them. Yes. And I know that if you put a teal pumpkin out, that's, is that, I don't know. There's so many different signals, colors that you can use these days. Mm-hmm. But what do you think about just in general, the concept of giving away little toys? I love that idea. Instead and of candy. That's actually something else that I'd want to do. I think... In my ideal world, what I really want to do is, first off, I want to have a cotton candy maker. And for at least the first hour, maybe two hours, I want to stand on the front lawn with all my treats and stuff and also give out cotton candy to the kids. Because I think that'd be just the most baller. I do too, but that's still not packaged. Well, yeah, but But they're they're watching you make make it. it. Yeah. And the parents are there. Yeah. 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 Well, and also, like, I'm going to be the only person with a cotton candy maker. Like, (laughs) they'll hunt me down. It'll be fine. One thing that I think is really important is have some, like, glow stick bracelets or mini coloring books or novelty pencils or something. Yeah. Um, Have some little toys just in case there are kids who can't have candy. And basically, uh, if kids already have enough candy and they want something else, then it keeps things fresh for them, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think it's tough to find a bunch of anything that is cool enough, but still affordable enough to give away. Do you know what I mean? Not if you use a little magazine that I loved as a kid called Oriental Trading. Oh yeah. Oriental Trading Company. So my grandma and my aunt owned a preschool. They actually sold it a few years ago, Um, but they would get all kinds of fun stuff for that. Uh, And they would get like, they do, um, events for the preschool too, where they'd invite kids and it'd be not only the kids that they're teaching, but also their slightly older siblings and stuff. So they'd have to get tons and tons and tons of little goodies. And they caught, they were able to get so many things from there for so cheap. I really liked the mini slinkies. I thought those were always fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, like novelty, novelty pencils and stuff. None of that's really expensive. Even if you're buying a hundred of them, especially if you're like a normal adult with a good job, you can afford it. Come on. Yeah. What's what's a typical Halloween budget? Is it 50 bucks? I think it depends on how baller you want to be. Right. My ideal Halloween budget for goodies, 200 bucks. Whoa. 100 to spend on little toys and stuff. Probably 50 to spend on the cotton candy machine. And then 50 for... Well, actually, I, may, I might have to reallocate that a little because I think that cotton candy machine might be a little bit more. I mean, it depends on... Because I'd probably just buy the machine at that point, you know? Right. (laughs) And then you'd have to amortize it over, you know, 10, 20 years. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think 200 is is good if you want to go balls to the wall. (laughs) Right. Now, that being said, this year, my Halloween budget so far, at least as far as candy goes, is exactly $6. Oh, And that's mostly because the only place I'm going to be giving out candy is at the store and corporate is refusing to pay for candy. And I think that's kind of dumb. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of my hard earned money because I know that they have way more money than I do. And are you going to, so if you're only spending six bucks, are you going to say, well, we're not really giving out candy. And based on the disappointment level of the look on the kid's face, you pull something out from behind the counter and go, but just for you, you can have one. <laughs> Don't tell your friends. I think what I'm going to do is at least for the first half of the bag, it's going to be first come, first serve. And then after that, I might save a few pieces just in case I get a really sad kid. There you go. That actually might change, though, if I have some time to go and see if there are some cheap hostess somewhere. Because I'd spend another like $20, $30 to like make a kid's day. You had me at cheap hose. <laughs> I'm kidding. Funny, funny. <laughs> oh, well, one more Halloween related thing I wanted to mention. I'm sure that uh, a lot of people, couples costumes wise, uh-huh. went as Barbie and Ken. Oh, I'm sure. I saw the best idea too late, uh, but a Barbenheimer couples costume. The woman goes oh as Barbie, gosh. the dude goes as Oppenheimer. Okay, that actually is a really good idea. Right, Why right. Why didn't we think of that? How? That would have been perfect. Sometimes I just don't connect the dots, man. Right. To be fair, though, 
That was one of the biggest memes of the year. Yeah. Well, and also, like, I didn't want to do something that everyone else was going to do. That's why I'm doing Batgirl. That and also, a big reason why I'm doing Batgirl is because last year, I bought these really rad yellow boots that I just loved. And I already had my Halloween costume when I bought them. So I wasn't going to change it then. But I was like, okay, because of these boots, next year, I'm going to be Batgirl. (laughs) And and now I'm doing it. (laughs) It, It's sort of like when you have one thing in the fridge, that becomes the inspiration for the entire dinner. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I got to use these cocktail (laughs) shrimp today. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. What else am I doing? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Now, really quick, I want to touch on one of my favorite things that I remember getting as a kid for for Halloween. Um, It was a combo of a soda pop, a hot chocolate packet, and a popcorn packet all tied up. It was from the rich neighborhood. Okay, and so I was like, oh, that's a good idea. A little movie snack pack, kind yeah. of? Yeah. Okay. And it was one of the mini sodas, too. It wasn't the really big, normal size cans. It was a mini can. But I was like, uh, this is genius. Yeah. Yeah, like even as a kid, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so creative. That's so smart of them. <laughs> you know what I'd... I'm going to use that someday when I'm an adult. <laughs> what I would love to do, you know how people forget really obvious things that right. you think everybody knows? Uh huh. I don't know if kids these days know about Coke and Mentos. Oh, that that would be the most chaotic (laughs) Halloween (laughs) giveaway. That'd be a great little care package to send. I love that. (laughs) Bundled Coke and Mentos. And you got to tell them about it when you give it to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to say, hey, kid, you want to play a good trick on your parents? (laughs) Take one of these, pop it in here, hand it to mom. It's going to be great. Yeah. (laughs) Now we've talked about some of our favorite treats. But what's been your favorite costume? Of yours or of mine? That you've ever done. I think the one I nailed the best was Negan from Walking Dead. Ooh. I've I've never watched an episode, but more than once I've gotten, you look like that guy. (laughs) And and they mean Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I Mm -hmm. started getting it, I guess, in 08 when he was a patient on ER and died. (laughs) I went to a meeting the next morning and they're like, you look like that guy that died on ER last (laughs) night. And then it followed everything he does. That's funny. You know, then it was Negan from Walking Dead, and uh, and and here it is. I thought it turned out pretty good. How about you? Um, first off, that's my favorite costume of yours too. <laughs> uh, mine was definitely a few years ago. I went as Edgar Allan Poe. That's right. Now I wish I would have had a raven because I think that would have really sold it, but I couldn't find one anywhere. Yeah, because we didn't have a spirit Halloween that year. That. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's like a Bob's Burger quality <laughs> pun right? that you did, yeah. Well, and I like it because it's almost a slutty Halloween costume, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is always fun to do anyway. But the but face was just exactly. It's as attractive as I think you are. <laughs> it's an off-putting sexy Halloween costume, <laughs> yeah. which is what's so fun about it. <laughs> Cognitive dissonance, yeah. Because sure. that's the thing. I'm not dressing up for men. I'm dressing up for me. (laughs) Right. And that's the proof right there is that I did that to my mug. (laughs) Well, and if the if the men really knew what they were doing, (laughs) they they would seek out people like you. I mean, really, I do think that the funny girl is kind of the one to go for. (laughs) Uh There's one more thing I want to mention that you brought to my attention this Uh year. I guess I don't get my car washed that often. But a lot of car washes, Pony Express, and I think I saw Firehouse on 17th. They're and doing Rubber Ducky on Broadway. Okay, they're doing like a haunted car wash or a haunted tunnel. I'm not sure what they call it. I'm not even sure what the tunnel of terror. I'm not even sure what it entails. The mm-hmm. pictures I saw look pretty tame, like here's a stack of pumpkins that you'll get to see. <laughs> Funny. But sounds sounds kind of fun. I could see a winged creature through the uh, window of the Pony Express. Okay. And it looked pretty big and pretty spooky, so. Like the Mothman? I wish. I think it was a dragon. Oh. I couldn't quite tell. Okay. Maybe it was Jeepers Creepers. Last weekend, we talked about a lot of art things going on right now. Performances, theater, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, one thing we talked about last week, the Gem State Players. Yes. We went and saw the their version of uh, Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. Yeah, uh-huh. And since it's over, spoiler alert, there's 10 people that start out on stage and one by one, they all die. So because it was just so top-notch and they held even my attention, mm-hmm. <laughs> I told Tasha this, like, in order to hold my attention for two and a half hours, it's got to be pretty good. Right. Gem State Players... And then there were none. You are IFAF this week. Crisp high five, double finger guns. Well, and it was such a dark horse because, like, I knew it'd be good, but I didn't think it'd be that good. It was that good. It was in Shelley, 
But they had a killer set. Yeah. And a killer cast, including Mr. H, uh, Terry yeah. Hale. Mm-hmm. And then the following night, I saw his daughter, uh, granddaughter, Nora Nielsen, in The Adams Family. Yes. Which was just fantastic. So I want to give a shout out to Jacob Meldrum. He played Gomez Adams. Mm-hmm. He's amazing, this guy. Well, he was great in Guys and Dolls. Yeah, he was uh, um, Nicely Nicely. Nicely Nicely. Mm-hmm. And, who sang Sit Down, You Rock in the Boat. Such a great song. He's been in all sorts, The Little Shop of Horrors. He's been in like everything in the mm-hmm. last two years. And he just hit it out of the park. He's so versatile. He's so good. His comic timing was there. Mm-hmm. Allison Rockwood played Morticia. She was fantastic. Nora Nielsen played Wednesday Adams. I, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of her. That whole family right. is just incredibly talented. In fact, I hear Dad Jason is going to be in something. Oh, fun. My memory isn't super hot, but I, I, I'd i love to see that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And I know we're going to talk about the Hale family as we get closer to December 6th, mm-hmm. too. Uh, there's how's, how's that for a tease? <laughs> but they do something really sweet and I think really important. Now, I wanted to point out that I actually didn't get to go to the Adams Family, which I was really sad about because I wanted to see it super bad. They did um, such a, an amazing job. That's what I heard. Because I'm glad you got to go at least. I only got to go to and then there were none. Um, but the funny thing is, realistically, of the two plays, which one would I probably have enjoyed more just by guessing? probably the Adams family because what do I love? <laughs> I love musicals. I love costume changes and dancing and prancing around and all that stuff. And and then there were none had none of that. And yet I loved it. It was so good. It, it was a couple hours long or maybe even longer, two and a half hours. Yeah. First of all, I don't know how Tasha Bear directed it and I don't know how she wrangled 10 actors to do exactly the right thing, but she did somehow. Yeah. And the the reason I love the Adams family so much was they just used the soundtrack. There was no live oh, orchestra, nice. so there was no room for error that way. And you mm-hmm. know how much I love good production. You do. Nothing against the live musicians that I've worked with in the past, mm-hmm. but that is sort of another unpredictable element. And so to know that that music was just nailed down and everybody hit every note. It was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I just, I love seeing talent here in East Idaho because, you know, sometimes you got to go to Salt Lake or Boise for that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Well, and I feel like just the local theater performances have really stepped up their game lately. I I think I've met Hannah Bingham, who played Alice in uh the Addams Family. She was the... Um, what do you call it? Like wild card. I was not expecting how amazing she was. I love that. <laughs> she's she's like you know. So th- this normal family comes to visit the Adams family, and it's very important to Wednesday because she might get engaged to this guy, or she is engaged, or she might get married. Anyway, so the normal family comes. The Adams family tries to be normal, and um, Hannah is the wife, and <laughs> she Alice and. She just, I would say, a standout breakout role. And I love the moral of the story of the Adams Family, which is if a dinner party gets awkward, just do some drugs (laughs) and everything will work out just fine. (laughs) As someone who didn't see it, (laughs) I feel like that needs more context. That's the moral. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to go see another play this upcoming week. Are we? The Sister Act. What? Oh, okay, good. That, uh-huh. That's another one. There's so many good ones out right. there. Right, yeah. yeah. And that's going to be at the Center Theater, which I haven't been to before. Okay. So I'm just so, it's so neat and fun how like artsy and metropolitan we're getting all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, with all of our local theater productions. So I'm glad it sort of only snowed for a day and now it's it's actually going to warm up just a little bit. Good. But I do love sweater weather. Sweater weather. <laughs> I love sweater weather too. I love I'm- saying sweater weather. <laughs> I love sweater weather too until it is nighttime. I'm in my nightgown and Rango wants to go outside and take a pee. Because <laughs> he takes forever. You you need like a trench coat. You know. Right I, by the door that you can throw on. I'll usually throw on my fuzzy robe, but that's not even enough. You know? Oh, and if it's fleece, the wind will just blow right through it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it will. Speaking of fall and sweater weather and PSLs. 
Do we hear that Rexburg is getting both a Starbucks and a Dutch Bros? Whoa. They're Mormon coffee or they're Mormon. Yeah. What, what, what are they called? Mormon coffee shop? Yeah. We talked about places like Pop Shop, Fizz, Biz, Thirst, Burst, Hip, Sip, <laughs> you know, our Mormon Starbucks. Yes. But now we're actually getting a Mormon Starbucks. Man. <laughs> in Rexburg. Is that even allowed? Yeah. you. I mean, you'd think that they'd be shutting it down. Well, they have plenty of, you know, don't they have fruit smoothies and stuff too? I wonder if they're focused on that more. I don't know. <laughs> Not really. And I know it doesn't. Mo- most of the stuff on their menu has caffeine in it. And I think Dutch Bros. Yes, but it's the temperature of the caffeine that matters. Yes, that's true. That's as long true. as it's not hot. Yeah, if it's Mountain Dew, it's fine. <laughs> Diet Coke, Mountain Dew, <laughs> fine. Monster <laughs> Energy, fine. Right? I think. Mm-hmm. I think there's some rules like that. I don't. Oh, I don't want to speak kids, out of turn because I'm not LDS. I remember but. kids bringing Monster Energy to church. Yeah. Okay. And they were like 12. It's like you don't need any more energy. What are no. you doing? Yeah. Just have some candy. Right. Just sugar rush like the rest <laughs> of us, kid. Yeah. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> For now, that's our show. Merry Christmas. How dare you? <laughs> I just want to wish. I want to be the Happy first Halloween to wish you a merry, merry Christmas. So excited. Do the do the button for me, would you? Yes. Happy Halloween. <laughs> that does sound creepy. You sounded like a goblin. That was Thank good. You. That's what I was going for. <laughs> do you like goblins? <laughs> <laughs> There's a blast from <laughs> 10 episodes ago. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, we have nothing to leave you with, so um uh, enjoy the sweater weather. And happy Halloween.